and welcome to our program Where God Weeps. A program where we talk about the situation of the suffering church around the world. On the east side of the African continent, we find Tanzania, a beautiful country well known for his natural beauties and spectacular flora and fauna. A very diverse country, it is composed of several ethnic, linguistic and religious groups. The territory was a colony under Portuguese, German and British occupation. Half of the 55 million population is Christian. The island of Zanzibar in the Indian Ocean is part of this nation. In this area, Christians have suffered harassment and violent attacks in recent years by fundamentalist Islamist groups. To know more about the work of the Catholic Church in this African country, it is my privilege to welcome to our program Bishop Anthony Lawen, Bishop of Mbulu in Tanzania. Your Excellency, welcome to our program. Thank you very much. When we talk about Tanzania, we imagine this spectacular beauty with the, with the Serengeti Park and the, the Kilimanjaro and the lakes and all this. Uh, what is the reality of the people in Tanzania? Is this really a paradise for all, all the, the Tanzanian people? Uh, yes, uh, uh, we are proud of that. It's true that we have this, uh, we are within that beautiful uh, country. Uh, with these uh, nice national parks. Of course, uh, lakes also we have, Lake Victoria, and also bordering uh, Indian Oceans, of course. So those are nice ones. And the people who are there, of course, are enjoying because uh, uh, the fruits of this nice area, like the national parks, are also benefited by the uh, people of the country. They bring benefits to, to the inhabitants of, of Tanzania. Yes. Now, I was checking some statistics about your uh, diocese, Your Excellency, and uh, you have approximately 300,000 Catholics. What do they do? Do they work in, are they dedicated to agriculture, or they, they are hoarders, or, or uh, they have cattle? What, what is the economy of, of the people that you, that you work with? Uh, the big number, uh, the majority of people of that area, uh, of the Diocese of Mbulu, are the farmers. Not that the, the big farmers, I can say, those who are having small, uh, small, small scale farms, uh, which is mainly for uh, uh, their support, it, for some is for subsistence farming, and the other part is uh, for the pastoral activities. The pastoral is those who are keeping animals also. Now, the reason why I ask you about this, Your Excellency, is because we have seen in some other countries in Africa that um, this, these two um, groups have lived together for many years, you know, the, the farmers and, uh, and the pastoralists, but now they have started to have uh, problems like in Zambia, in Nigeria. Is this the case also in, in Tanzania? Yes, yes, they have been moving here and there looking for, uh, I mean, for the pastures, for their animals. Why? Because uh, the land, the main part of the land is there for cultivation. So those who are uh, cultivating farms could not stay with the lives of keepers. So they move finding uh, an open area for them where they can keep their animals. So it, that is the same case also in Bulu. Is the case that um Climate change is affecting? Climate change is also affecting, yes. We are experiencing these days um, a long time of a drought and short rain, so uh, uh, the farmers, also well, the, 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 these uh, livestock keepers also, are experiencing that problem. So they are moving here and there to get an area which is uh, more better for them, of course. So this creates uh, uh, some instability yes. in the, between these groups. And when was your uh, episcopal, episcopal ordination? 
I was uh, appointed in May uh, 2018, but then uh, consecrated and installed on the 12th of August 2018. And what, what is your Episcopal motto? A service and uh, unity. Service and, and, and unity. Why you think that that's something particularly needed in, uh, in your diocese? Uh, that's very important. Uh, for me, it's important these days uh, because I wanted to, uh, to strengthen uh, uh, that unity which is among the people that's priest together with uh, lay people, uh, including other groups because we have also religious and also uh, other religions, other religions that are within the area for the purpose of improving the service that is required for for the people in general. In the, in the um, introduction to our program, I was mentioning some very unfortunate uh, and violent episodes that have happened in your country, uh, some in Zanzibar, in the island of Zanzibar, but then uh, some others more closer to your, to your area. And um, these attacks against Christians, have they had an impact in your community with the people that you work with? Yeah, somehow, I mean, in those days, for example, uh, that one which happened in Arusha, Arusha is very close to our part, uh, so it brought uh, a kind of worries among the people. What happened in Arusha? It was a bomb, I think, uh, uh, during the Mass when uh, the, the Apostolic Nuncio at that time, together with the Archbishop of Arusha, were starting, I mean, in the, the, the Mass, which was supposed to be celebrated there. Yeah. Uh, of course, that happened, and some people died during that occasion. As humans, you know, sometimes it brought a kind of worries, but uh, that did not last long. Uh, we thank God, Tanzanians are uh, friendly, and uh, we, we thought that was done by just few people. Uh, it, it doesn't have any kind of, uh, uh, let's say, of a group which is a religious of a religious basis or we don't know anyway but uh, it has gone it's not there right now so things have come down things have come down and people are happy and the relations between uh, people in the area is so now, fine you are from from the area you are from Tanzania so you grew up yes with uh, with muslim friends and, and and christian friends yes and you never had a problem with it no, no. Uh, especially in the area where I'm from, uh, uh, the big number is like Christians, and uh, of course we have uh, Muslims, we have other religions, but the relation is so good. It's so good. We share many things, even in the occasions, and even the service which you are providing. Normally, we don't discriminate. Service is provided to the people uh, who are there. Uh, if it's in the village, in the village, or if it's in the district, it's in the district. So it can be provided by the church, the Catholic church, or uh, it can be provided by the other church or a, uh, or a religion which is there. It's, it's, it's fine. We are doing uh, service. We, will, we will talk about the, the, the services that the church uh, provides in, in the area. But before going into that topic, Your Excellency, it's very interesting to read the statistics that um, Tanzania for the last years have been growing tremendously um, economically. It's uh, in, in the statistics that I, that I found, it was 6.7% annually. That's huge. Now, at the same time, in the, in the statistics, I, I found that 20% of the of, of Tasmanians live with less than one dollar a day. So why this contrast, Your Excellency? In in one way, economy is developing, but it's not really affecting in a positive way the people. Yeah, it's true uh, that uh, Tanzania is, is is growing fast economically, of course. And that uh, uh, number of people are living while earning uh, that little amount, which you have mentioned, of course. The reason can be the way the country is, for example, some are in very remote areas, of course. Circulation 
of uh, money plus many other things is not that uh, good compared to those who are uh, in the areas where infrastructures and all these things are well improved. So it is possible that... So is this development hasn't affected the whole country, just particular area? Yeah, it's moving, it's moving, we can say. Uh, maybe those who are also uh, in the areas that are not well enjoying um, in this growth of the economy will also enjoy sometimes later on. But the challenges, of course, I can say there are some challenges. Uh, in the developing countries, we cannot avoid these challenges. The type of activities like farming, which we are doing, is uh, still of, of the lower standard because of the, uh, the level of development that we have. Okay. Also, uh, we you are You mean like the, like the technology the that technology, has been used? Yes, I mean technology, of course. But also, uh, we depend on the rain. Uh, we are not applying uh, irrigation. That is done by very few. And those ones, of course, their economic standards always will be different from those who are uh, depending on rain only. They cannot uh, use uh, these irrigation technologies and all these things. That's what I can mention. But of course, uh, reasons of economic can be there, of course, and uh, maybe if some other uh, reasons that can be given by those who are, of course, well prepared in those fields. Maybe it's more involved in the economy of the country. The economy of the country. Now we all know that uh, the role of education to uh, improve the development of any country is uh, very, very important. What is the church doing in, um, in the education field? The church in Tanzania is well involved, engaged in education provision uh, service. Even before secondary school, it has primary schools, uh, well prim prepared primary schools that are providing education for, uh, for the students, secondary schools also, also for it has also colleges and universities uh, that are also uh, supporting government in the sub in the service that the government is supposed to provide. We are complementing what the government is doing. Now, how does the church support all these institutions? I just uh, is 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 doing the service in uh, depending on the sources uh, that are from its own people sometimes. Uh, Christians contribute, that's one. Parents contribute because they pay school fees in the schools, but uh, those who are not able sometimes are supported. But um, there are also other stakeholders who are also supporting the church in, in providing these services, uh, including even the government. For example, for the higher education, the government is providing loans uh, sometimes. Of certain so percentage. Scholarships that the students used in the Catholic it, institution. Yes, sometimes it's, it provides loans for the higher education uh, for the students, but then later on they, they are supposed to, to service the loan to pay that back when they are employed, of course. I would imagine that you rely a lot on the, the work of religious sisters for this particular uh, field of education. Yeah, they are supporting. It's their work. It's also the work of the religious men. It's also the work of the dioceses, because we have also diocesan priests. Uh, they are also doing this. Uh, but dioceses are also owning uh, schools, even from the level of kindergarten. Uh, the, I mean, the church is, in, is involved in, serving, in providing education. And what about um, social services that the church provides? Yeah, if you say social services, we include also education and other health services. Health for services, let's say. Uh, like health services, of course, the church in Tanzania has uh, hospitals, of course, that has run uh, around 100% by the church itself. There are other hospitals that are uh, administered, administered by the church, but services provided uh, in partnership with the government, of course. Uh, there's this PPP, public-private partnership, we are doing that also. The church also has uh, health centers, it has uh, dis dispensaries in all levels. So of course, uh, even the referral hospitals, uh, there's one in Tanzania, 
Buganda Hospital that belongs to the Catholic Church. It's a referral hospital. KCMC Hospital in the northern part that belongs to the Lutheran Church. So uh, it, there's a service which is provided. Uh, of course, so many other uh, institutions. And, uh, and this, these institutions, Your Excellency, do they depend on um, international aid, the support of uh, international organizations to, to be able to operate? These days, no, because um, I mean the donation, the support that is received from the international aid uh, so it's, it's, it's always reduced. Uh, every year it's reduced. So the, it's certain percent is from the, uh, this international aid one, but the, the other part is from uh, the circulation of money that is received from the service that is provided in, in, in the institutions themselves. Okay. And uh, certain grants from the government sometimes is there including uh, secondment, secondment of the staff, uh, some of the staffs in uh, some of the hospitals are paid by the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but administrations and these other activities done by the church. Now, now that we're talking about uh, health services, um, another very, very uh, big challenge that your country has is people living with uh, HIV and some of them with AIDS already. Is the church doing work on this regard, uh, or it's also included in all these uh, health services? Yeah, the church is doing a lot, and it has done a lot uh, in making sure uh, people's health are saved. For example, uh, in the hospitals, normally uh, there is a chance, there is a position for uh, uh, either training, one, building capacity of those uh, who are affected or a psychological treatment, and uh, also uh, the clinic that is done and supported by the church in different parts. But also for uh, uh, awareness that it's required. The church is doing a lot. It's doing that for the youth in its areas, like in the parishes or the centers, sometimes even in the institutions. So it's doing that. In some uh, dioceses or uh, in, uh, let's say the, the programs that are under institu institutions, you will find also uh, the, the community-based health cares where uh, these programs are included from the, the family level or a village level uh, to uh, even to, 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 to the national level where the Episcopal conferences or uh, the, 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 the church in general uh, is involved by itself to make sure uh, uh, either those who are affected are helped or those who are in danger are protected. So to, to work in a proactive way with yes. prevention. Yes. yes. In all this work, uh, Your Excellency, how much do you rely on the help of um, lay people to work for the pastoral needs? of your diocese, like catechists, uh, all these classes of formation. Um, you, ha you have a lot of lay people working for you? Oh, yes. Uh, normally, uh, that is uh, the big number of the faithful we have. Uh, clergy or the religious are very few. So we rely them, uh, I mean to them, in fact, I can say we totally rely on them because uh, for the support of the church, we rely on them. For administration, the council of the church is uh, involving them normally, and uh, we plan with them together for evangelization work that the church is doing, also for the development uh, part. Uh, uh, that the church is also doing. Uh, so we depend on them. We depend also on the catechists, for example. Like in my place, catechists are very important. We have more than 800 catechists because uh, the number of priests is not so big. We still have a few uh, priests. Uh, so we are using catechists. They are the ones who are teaching in the parishes, the faith to in people. the house stations, so 
those who are very close to people are catechists. Talking about vocations, Your Excellency, do you have vocations in, in, in Tanzania or specifically in your diocese? Yes, we have vocations. We thank God that we have vocations this time. Uh, for the sisters, of course, yes. Uh, many uh, young girls are joining. But also for the seminarians. My diocese has got 70 seminarians right now. Those who are joining, uh, those who are in a major seminaries, uh, I say, studying philosophy and theology right now. Okay, this year, that's my, uh, and the number we have right now. Uh, that's the same to, to other dioceses. We even try to expand buildings that we have in our seminaries so as to, uh, uh, to have more classes and uh, areas for accommodation, I mean to accommodate these uh, uh, seminarians. So there's vocations in Tanzania. And why, what do you think is the secret for, for, uh, for all these vocations? Uh, one thing and... Uh, Obviously they come from their families, so they must be uh, yes, good, yes. solid Catholic families. The family families. apostolate is well done in many areas. So that means uh, uh, the church has tried to, I mean, to, 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 to reform its way of uh, reaching the families through the Christian uh, communities and prepare uh, those who are supposed to receive the vocations to, to receive, to understand and receive their vocations. Uh, that's one reason. The second thing is also the formation that is done. Uh, in Tanzania, uh, all the dioceses and religious have prepared the formators, uh, the formators who are uh, doing their work and also promoting vocations in different areas. So uh, that has brought uh, a good fruit, uh, good results. It seems to, like, to yes. The church. What would you say is your main challenge at the moment, Your Excellency, for your pastoral work uh, to attend to your people in the diocese? Of course, as uh, uh, one thing as a new bishop, first of all, uh, um, I'm still trying to, to plan for what is supposed to be done together with my team for about five years to put them in the priorities, of course, and then attend according to the requirements and the availability and, 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 uh, and, and, and the capacity that we have. So we have a financial challenge for that purpose. That's one. But another thing is, I mean, the area whereby uh, the big number is traditionalist. So we are, we still have a lot to do With to first make evangelization. sure others are, uh, yes, uh, are, uh, are baptized and so forth. So the first evangelization, the primary evangelization is very important in my part now. Uh, we are th 334 uh, Christians, that's Catholic. Others might be, uh, let's say, f almost 500 together with some Muslims. But a number which is not less than 400,000 is still traditionalist in that area. This is out of the population of, of uh, 1 million uh, and 100,000 almost. So that's why that's why all your um, catechists and and yes, yes. people become so so important. Yes, yes. Finally, Your Excellency, what would you like the Universal Church to to do for for the Church in Tanzania? Well, in in terms of your needs, how can we help? Of course, there are many things depending uh, on the region. How, where uh, the region where the I mean the church or the diocese is located, but. Uh, this time, I think uh, it's very important uh, to be supported in evangelization because that is the primary thing uh, which the church is supposed to do. Evangelization through uh, social services that is provided, because still the church is providing social services in some areas like for water, we are still providing water. We are supporting people in different areas together with the government sometimes but that is still required for social services, for um, that education and health services. Okay, but uh, uh, for uh, uh, 
but yeah i mean for the the current situation which we have of course we also need uh, the church to be supported for the training of personnel uh, personnel who are prepared in different fields the fields uh, that uh, will I mean will help them to go according to the technology that we have the growth of the economy that we are experiencing and uh, even uh, the ethics and many other things that are happening right now so that is uh, important uh, I think right now well thank you very much your excellency for sharing this time with us thank you very much for uh, also inviting me in this press of and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us in another program of Where God Weeps. If you want to know more about the work that the church is doing in Tanzania, we encourage you to contact the information at the end of this program. Thank you, and God bless. I